me. I'm so glad you're here and you're having fun. I'm also having fun. Uh, I'm having more fun than I had at a show I did last night, which was at a Kratom bar. Do you guys know what Kratom is? A, a few people are nodding, which is based on my experience at the Kratom bar, how people on Kratom act. Uh, <laughs> they're very chill. Kratom is a like low dose, extremely mild opiate. And uh, doing comedy for people who are on that, not, <laughs> not super easy. They're a very respectful audience. <laughs> a little low energy. Um, I, I've, done, I've done Kratom before and like I kind of, I get it, like it's very relaxing. Uh, again, which makes it a bad comedy drug. <laughs> Alcohol is a perfect comedy drug because it uh, it relaxes you while also making you like very annoying and like an <laughs> easy laugh. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kratom not so much. I mean, like my problem with Kratom is that it it like you stay too lucid. Like I like weed. You know what I mean? I like weed because like I need my drugs to make my life complicated. That's what's important to me. Like when I, I don't smoke weed like socially, when I am smoking weed, it's because I want to spice up my boredom with a little confusion. You know what I mean? I just, it's usually when I'm like by myself and I have nothing to do for a couple hours and I'm like, let's play this afternoon on hard mode. Why not? Why not? Why not make washing these dishes take too long? That'll be fun. <laughs> It's, I like that it's like legal-ish now, but it's also like, I feel like it has lost its edge, you know? It was never a particularly edgy drug, but I feel like we've fully just gentrified it into it being lame now. It's not cool to smoke weed. It's funny that rappers rap about it like it's cool, cause it's really not like a very, it's basically like rapping about like drinking orange juice or something. Like it's, there's a rapper I like named Killer Mike. You guys know Killer Mike? He's great, he's, he's, he's wonderful. But his name is Killer Mike. Like I'm expecting a certain level of intensity from a guy with that name. Here's a sample Killer Mike lyric for you guys. I smoke the kush, I eat the puss. He says that in a Run the Jewels song. And I'm like, those are the two least intimidating activities I can think of. Don't get me wrong, big fan of both. I'm just saying, Someone who looks like me should not be a fan of the activities you are describing if your name is Killer Mike. You know what I mean? Like that's, you're not Killer Mike at that point. You're Kat's friend Mike who she calls when she's lonely, you know? <laughs> Gangster rap should not include a description of my idea of a relaxing Sunday afternoon. You know? That's all I'm saying. But, uh, I don't know. I like it. Um, I, uh, I, something about me, all my, all my friends are men. That's something about me. Um, and I feel, I, it's like a weird thing to have as a woman to have all friends that are men because I think um, a lot of times when a woman says that, uh, it's because she fucking hates women. Like that's what that means. It's like she wants to fuck all of her friends and she hates women. That's what it means when someone is like, all my friends are guys. But like I didn't say all my friends are guys. I said all my friends are men because I am 34 years old. I'm not friends exclusively with men because I don't like women. I'm exclusively friends with men because I am not a good friend. Do you understand? <laughs> My friends are all men because I am a bad listener and I talk about professional wrestling a lot. Like that's, I love women. I totally get why they are not as into me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, and I'm absolutely not fucking them. Like there is no sexual tension with me and my male friends. It's not, when you get to my age, being friends with men is not like a fun, flirty, will they, won't they thing. It's mostly like me giving them pep talks about how women don't really care if you're bald. So <laughs> that's like the kind of emotional tenor of our relationships, which I do want to get the word out there uh, at the gamer show. Women don't really care if you're bald. That's not, it's fine. We really, we really don't, don't mind. Um, but mostly because we really care if you're tall. And if you're tall, we can't see the bald spot. So that's kind of how that works. Um, but despite all of the information I have told you about myself so far, I am a heterosexual woman. Um, believe it or not, most people don't. Um, Prove it's not a choice right here. Um, I do like men. I My problem, my standards are too high. I know it. Um, I, I want to date someone so much more attractive than me that the New York Post writes an article about it like it's news. Do you know what I mean? 
You know when they do that, they write an article about two people, not famous, don't have any like interesting jobs or like have done anything. It's just like, these people are very mismatched attractiveness wise. <laughs> Breaking news. That's what I want. I want to be in a relationship where like videos of us go viral on TikTok, but no one is allowed to verbalize why. <laughs> because if they do, they're being rude. That's what I want. If people aren't coming up to my partner and telling him he's brave, I'm not interested. In <laughs> That's what I want. I'm sorry. It's. I feel like a lot of women need, like, uh, obviously, like, uh, uh, women, straight women want to date hot guys, but a lot of very attractive women really need to be the hot one in the relationship. Like, it's very, it's, they don't like with, like, the guy is getting all the attention. Not me. I am happy being the ugly one. Totally fine with it. Not a problem. Oh, I feel like there are all these hot girls now are obsessed with like medium ugly men. Like that's what they keep saying. They're like medium ugly guys. I'm like, great, I will take the hot ones. I I like hot ones. That's what I like. But no. I'm joking. I I I like I do think my standards are too high, but I don't think that's really what the problem is. I think the problem is that like what I like and what's out there are not like meshing. You know what I mean? Like I really don't have that many qualifications. I do have a pretty wide range of people that I'm interested in. Um, I guess I'll give you some examples. I feel like that's the best way to describe this. So like, I'm a, politically, I'm like very far left. I'm like a socialist, uh, you know, and capitalist, that kind of thing. It's important to me to date somebody who kind of shares in that stuff and is like an anti-capitalist, you know, like progressive leftist type of person, uh, but I am not polyamorous. So that cuts out like all of them. That's, they're all dating each other. They're in one relationship. There's, I'm not in it. It's totally fine if that's what you're into. The ethical non-monogamy, that's what they, if you see E and M on a dating profile, that's what that means. As far as I'm concerned, that means eh, not for me. You know, that's what the EM stands for. It's totally cool, but not what I'm into. And then like the other thing, I have like a wide range of people that I'm attracted to, but I do like men with long hair, uh, but I won't go to Bushwick. So, <laughs> so that's tough. It's hard, it's hard like the Venn diagrams are not working out for me, you know? And I was complaining about this to a friend of mine and she was like, let me put this together for you so you can see what you're telling me here. So what you're looking for is a progressive, egalitarian, long-haired man who is passionate about monogamy. And I was like, yes, that's what I want. And she was like, you don't think your standards are too high? And I was like, no, that's like two qualifications. And she was like, you just described Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> just fair, they would write an article in the New York Post about me. <laughs> I dated him, so yeah. That was kind of a wake up call. Um, <laughs> I am like worried about getting back into a relationship though, because like, you know, with the pandemic and everything, I've been in kind of a dry spell and like I'm scared. I'm a little worried about getting intimate with somebody again because like, do you guys, I mean, I feel like this is a rhetorical question. You're all gamers, so you know about post nut clarity, right? You know what that term is? <laughs> yeah. It's a thing. I recently learned that in Japan they call it philosopher time. Which is <laughs> Incredible. Much classier, much classier. But yeah, it's called post nut clarity. After, what it is, is that like, men get horny and they're insane, right? We all know this. And then they come and they get a bird's eye view of their entire life. And that's when like every life decision is made from what I understand, like that's when marriages end. That's when people change religions. Every membership at a rock climbing gym, post not clarity, that's when it happens. Um, but that doesn't, like women, biologically, like our hormones and stuff, that's not what it is. Like with men, like being horny and, and coming and everything, that's like this need that once it's met, it's like, okay, done, checked off the list, on to the next thing. Women can keep coming. Again, news I feel important to share with the gamer community. <laughs> Women can keep coming. And it's like the opposite for women. We don't get post-nut clarity. Like women start out sane 
And then if we come enough times, our brains just like don't work anymore. And we make terrible decisions based on it. You know what I mean? Like if you ever see those couples where it's like the woman has won a Nobel Prize and the man is like a dog walker, you know? You're seeing post-nut psychosis. That's what that is. 